In this talk, I'm going to go through a quick data processing and visualization exercise with Claw Code and Python. And a little bit of background is I've been actively using Claw Code pretty much since its launch for about 10 months now. And I've been collecting like these different tips that I found uh, for myself in this GitHub repo. And I could tell you all about these, like use your voice to chat with Claw and use it for research, like a Google replacement. And uh, use multiple tabs for multitasking, like the Anthropic team was talking about. But I figured it's sometimes better to show, not just tell. So that's what I'm gonna try to do in this session through that little demo. So I'm just gonna dive into it here. And just to give you a little bit of background and to give Claude a little bit of background, what, I'm work what I was working on, this is an actual project I worked on with Claude Code, uh, was basically, I'm in the process of getting a mortgage and I'm trying to decide fixed versus variable mortgage. Uh, you know, which one should I get? Can you do some research on that in Canada? So that's the you know, question I was trying to ask. And you can obviously let it do research, but what I decided to do is I want to do some economic analysis. Uh, can, you, can you tell me a website uh, where I can find the historical interest rates, unemployment rates, and uh, interest rates, unemployment rates, and inflation rates over the past 10 years or so in Canada. What's a good website for that? Uh, do some research on that. So I did that. And then uh, this is like a shorter version of what I actually did. And then I also said, um, I want to visualize some data. It's a time series data, three, uh, three pieces of data in the same chart with Python, Python 3.12 in particular. And um, what's a good library for that? I want it to be interactive, but you know, simple enough. So I guess this is the you know, multi-cloud uh, sort of uh, simple, simplified version of the workflow that you know, Anthropic was talking about just now. Uh, so we got this research, I'll say, all right, uh, this research is fine. Can you put it in a document uh, first of all, create a folder for this research, call it like mortgage research or something, and then put it in a markdown document there. And I want to check it. So open it uh, for me in VS Code and turn that folder into a Git repo and you know commit. That should be good. And then this one, you know, it's giving me diff these different websites. I ended up using Trading Economics. So I'll say, okay, Trading Economics looks pretty good. Uh, can you open those? three pages for the three metrics that I care about in my browser. You should be able to use the open command uh, just by telling it that. This one, it looks like it's uh, recommending Plotly. Yeah, interest, unemployment. So one thing I need to do is I need to click tenure here. And this is like a good website for this kind of data. And then here, I'll say, okay, Plotly sounds good. Uh, can you make a chart of inflation rates, unemployment rates, and interest rates in Canada for the past, actually, I, I, I'm gonna create it for the past 10 years with real data, but just to get started with it, can you make, make up some fake data for the past year, and then visualize it, you know, open, uh, just run it, open it in my browser using Plotly, Python 3.12, and then use the following folder. So I'll just do that, and then I just need to like bring this over, this folder name that it was, you know, it just created. <laughs> uh, I'll just, uh, I think, do real pass mortgage this folder name, right? So I'll just do that, this folder. Looks like it, this one is done. It looks like it opened it for me in VS Code right here. And I can do open preview to like check it if I want. Uh, and then I can do, all right, that's perfect. Uh, I wanna like double check and check the commit history. So open uh, this project in GitHub desktop for me. This is uh, like a common workflow I use. And then this one I don't need uh, right now. Yeah, and then this one, I need to fetch the data for Cloak Code. And what I actually decided to do is I said inspect element here and I found the right, uh, for it, edit, edit, edit as HTML, copy, and I said, 
Okay, great. And now I'm looking at uh, interest rates, you know, this one of the pages. And I have the following HTML snippet. What I want you to do is I want you to write a, a JavaScript script uh, in the following folder uh, that I can copy and paste into the browser console directly. So put it in a file, open it in, in VS Code for me, and then give it to me in PB copy, and then write it in a way that works, that works for all of these different pages because the structures are pretty similar. And to do that, look at the URL structure, how the URL is written, take the last part, for example, for interest rate, you know, take the interest rate, use that as the file name so I can download it as a CSV file. Let's see if it's able to do like such a complicated uh, request. Uh, it was able to do that in the past, but again, we'll see. So it looks like this one, we need the folder name just to make this. And then I should also remind it what the URL is. Let's see how that works. And this one, it's like it's doing the visualization thing. That's perfect. And OK, so this is fake data. That's great. All right, that looks good. Uh, let's commit to what we have. And then it looks like this one, it's opening up uh, GitHub Desktop for me. I'm not sure if you guys use like any visual uh, Git clients, but I find like this really useful for like checking the Git history like that. And then this one is doing the JavaScript code. I think it should be able to give it to me through PB copy, as I mentioned, you know, directly into my uh, clipboard. I should have gotten it. Let's try that. I have a backup data just in case, but we'll see. It looks like, uh, right, so let's put it in desktop because I, I think I have the old data uh, just for testing there. So I put it in on desktop, right? And then I'll do the same thing here. Let's see if it works here. Unemployment rate, so the file name is correct. And right here too, desktop. So I should have saved everything in desktop. OK, I, I saved them in desktop. So can you uh, copy them over to the mortgage research uh, folder? I'll just do that. And then this one, I think it's done the uh, visualization. So I can say, all right, so we should have the uh, CSV files with real data soon in the mortgage research folder uh, that you've already used. So make sure to examine them, uh, see what the structure is like, and then use the real data this time to visual visualize it in a new Python file. So let's do it that way. And then, yeah, this one is there. And the next thing I want to do, if I can, OK, I might need to wait for this one first. I guess that's, a cha that's the challenge of like uh, coordinating multiple cloud code uh, instances. But it looks like this one's doing its job. And I'm going to queue up the next, next job after that, I'll say. Uh, so in that folder, I have put uh, three different pieces of data. And I want you to look at unemploy unemployment rates and inflation rates in particular uh, for the past uh, 10 years in Canada. And I want you to add up these two metrics, unemployment plus inflation. That's called a misery index. That's a real economic index. Uh, so make that file and then turn it into a CSV file using Daft, the multimodal data processing library. Uh, it might be kind of an overkill for this particular uh, task because it's pretty simple. Uh, and full, full disclosure, I work there. So I'll just do that. And then make sure to use Python 3.12. That's important, uh, I found for, for my testing. So the CSV files are there. And then I can ask this to write. So I need to do this first before I send this one in. Yeah, this one first. Visualize everything. Actually, I, I can do visualization and processing at the same time. And the CSV files are there. Assuming that data is correct, I think this one is done. All right. It, this, so this one is looking at the CSV structures. Uh, this one's, all right, that's perfect. Inflation, unemployment, bank of interest, uh, bank of Canada interest rate. So this is a type of data analysis uh, 
tasks that I might have used like Excel for, and it would have taken a long time. Uh, but you know, it's much faster this way, at least for me, because I'm a little bit familiar with you know Python. So this one saying I created the CSV. Now you should be able to find another piece of CSV there that's for misery index. Can you add it there in the visualization and open it for me? So this demo is almost done, as you can see. All right, that's perfect. Uh, check uh, what we have in this folder. Commit all of them with appropriate uh, commit message, and then open, uh, I guess, open the folder for me on GitHub Desktop again so I can check. And then I, I, normally I do stuff like you know, create a draft PR, basically do the whole thing, you know, uh, basically from the beginning to the end, uh, almost entirely through cloud code. So you can see misery index, that's uh, you know, unemployment plus inflation. And I was actually able to use this particular chart, exactly the same chart, to help me make a better, you know, a better um, purchase decision. So I think that's pretty much it. It is, oh, yeah, it is doing the get and you know, adding stuff, committing stuff, opening everything in GitHub Desktop. That's the demo. I was so worried it might not work, but I, I, I'm so glad <laughs> everything worked out. It, it seems like Opus 4.5 is pretty consistent, I found. So this is a pretty cool demo, but like I said, uh, this, is, this kind of type, you know, this type of workflow is great for real work too, you know, as you saw from uh, the Anthropic q and I, I, I use this type of, I guess you could say multi-cloud uh, workflow for my own work, for personal research, and all of these different things, and I found them to be really useful, and I feel like it's a great way to you know, get more opportunities for yourself and to be productive you know, in your personal work and life. And a quick example of this is just yesterday, I had this um, GitHub action uh, CI uh, thing that kept failing. And I was like, oh, what's, what's happening? And so I just gave it to you know, this cloud instance that I have in one of the containers I have. And it was able to just you know, analyze everything uh, with my instruction. And I didn't think it was a big deal. You know, it's, it, it is, I know it is able to do that. But I feel like because I'm an early adopter, you know, I feel like, um, I have a little bit of an edge because I have these uh, refined workflows at this point. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. Uh, on the left, you see the uh, you know, Git, uh, Cloud Code Tips <coughs> repo. I think we're like three stars away from 200 stars. Uh, on the right, uh, we, you see the DAF to the multi multimodal processing library uh, that I mentioned. Uh, we're at 5,000 stars at this point, so feel free to give us a star there too. And thanks so much, everyone. <laughs>